Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. John Coleman and I have one of our favorite guests, John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. How are you doing, John John? I'm very well. I survived the holidays, survived 2021, so let's get going. <laughs> All right. Now, John, I don't know about you. Uh, you're not traveling half as much as you did uh, oh, only a year or two ago. I'm, I'm, I haven't been on a plane since uh, two months ago, and that was only to Florida, which yeah. I regret. But, but uh, there are still a lot of people traveling, uh, and I'm curious because, you know, we often talk about, uh, with you, talk about going to Europe or someplace like that, the, being a, a visitor there. What do visitors from other countries have to know about coming to America? I, I, tipping is, I think, the biggest uh, issue that people have, is it not? Uh, yeah, it is, because largely in Europe, uh, speaking about all of the continents, but not so much England, um, they do not tip, uh, by and large. Um, and I think we talked about that in another program, but uh, a lot of people who come here from Europe pretend they don't know they're supposed to tip, but it's in all the guidebooks, and they have to, but they still, well, what's an appropriate tip? I don't know, because we don't tip back in France, we don't tip back in Germany, and so forth. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's also true for if you come from, you know, let's say Idaho, and you're visiting New York for the first time, you could well be intimidated for no reason, except that your ignorance of what you should be tipping, how you should interact with people whom you should ask for directions and um, many other things that because the people in New York are different from the people in Los Angeles or Las Vegas or Chicago, any big city, faster pace. Um, so it's, it's, it's really about what you should expect and you should bone up on before you come here. All right. So what, what are the differences uh, for, uh, I, I, get, I, I think we're talking American big city culture. Mm -hmm. Largely. Because yeah. just you and I, if we're going to Italy, we're probably going to go to Rome, Venice, Florence, maybe Naples. Uh, we're not going to go to Forte dei Marmi in the middle of Liguria or something. That we, we may get there on the second or third trip, by which time you will know all the things you're supposed to know. No, this is the, the, the French traveler who, when he comes back, and they are they desperate to come back uh, during uh, COVID, the, he's coming back to New York, and he may go to Las Vegas, and he may go to Miami or even Hawaii, but... Uh, Got to know how to how to act. What are the manners? Because the French have strict manners, and the Italians do, and the British do, and they all expect you to pay attention to them and not be a boor. Do do Americans seem to come off as rude to foreigners? Yes, yes, because we <laughs> we do not wish to fit in. We more or less expect them to fit our expectations, and that's that's just wrongheaded. Mm. What else? Well. Okay, let's say you are coming from abroad, or even if you're coming into JFK or LaGuardia Airport, um, get cash in small denominations. Uh, this is much more important in the United States than it is in Europe, which is now so heavily dependent on credit cards. If you want a bottle of water in Europe, you get it from a credit card. Um, it's just bing, bang, boom. You, you swipe it, you show it. We are not as well set up with the universal product code. So when you get to the airport, go to one of those kiosks, the machines, and get money. That's going to take you through the next few days. You can always get it, get more if you go to an HDM machine, but um, get it because you're going to need it almost immediately for things like tips. And also try to get it in, as I said, small denominations. Fifties are really not going to help you unless you're going to be going to the movies with three other people, which was going to end up costing you $50. And then you could use your credit card. It's not to say you can't use your credit card in restaurants or movies, but um, it's a good idea to have cash on hand. Yeah, and, also, uh, uh, also, John, I guess uh, uh, you're, uh, you're mainly talking about things like restaurants and things like that, but uh, bellhops and uh, things like that, people who take your luggage in uh, uh, are... Uh, not ordinarily tipped in other countries. I, or at least I seem to remember many years ago when I spent a lot of time in Australia, uh, uh, traveling around there. Uh, it was uh, it was only they looked at hey, you funny if you gave a tip uh, to a, a bellhop or uh, somebody in a restaurant. 
But here, you would need it, and there's no place to give a credit card to a, a bellhop. No. Um, yeah, I mean, over there, if you tip somebody a small amount, let's say leave a, a euro on the bistro cafe after you had coffee and a croissant, that's very nice of you, but it really isn't expected. Um, the people who carry your luggage, yeah, you give them a euro or something. But here, you've got to, you really do have to tip. It's expected at least a buck a bag. You know, and uh, the guy who's you're getting your taxi, uh, the doorman, he gets another buck or so. And you can, you, you know, you can have as much largesse as you want, but um, you don't want to be uh, thought of as cheap. Americans, when they go to Europe, they think, oh, they're going to think I'm cheap if I don't, if I don't uh, give a tip to everybody. But it's just wrong-headed. So, what other kinds of social habits do we have as Americans that somebody coming to the big city, to Gotham, would, uh, would need to know? You, anybody, and I have, been, I have had my car towed in New York City. I've lived here all my life. Parking rules and parking signs are deliberately written to be bizarro world. <laughs> That's how they get money. I mean, to get your car towed in New York, you not only pay about a hundred dollar fine, you pay about another two hundred dollars to get your car out of the uh, the pound, which is way over on Twelfth Avenue. So you got to take a taxi to get the Twelfth Avenue to get to the pound to get your car. <clears throat> but in in every city, it's bad. It's 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 terrible in New York. In Europe, uh, they're pretty much, <laughs> especially in Italy, they say no parking. It's a P with a slash through it. But nobody pays attention to that anyway. Okay. But here, that's how the municipalities make money. Yeah. Um, if you park overtime or you don't put some money in the slot, uh, you're going to hear up for an $80 fine for, for parking um, uh, overtime. So really watch that rule. The best thing to do, let's say you park outside of a restaurant or a building and you cannot figure out those signs because they're saying things like, no parking, 8 p.m. to... 9 p.m. afterwards parking only for trucks and commercial till 3 p.m. afterwards from 7 p.m. no standing. <laughs> uh, this is alternate really, Thursdays, yeah. Uh, alternate Thursdays, exactly because they have street cleaning. So these are uh, impossible to, to understand fully. And I, I usually, if there is a doorman, say, can I park right here? And the guy would say, yeah, after 7 o'clock, you can park right here. It's not a problem. Or he'll say, no, you're going to get towed. Yeah. Um, well, in, so. I, I know for a fact that in uh, New York City, Chicago, and Los Angeles, if there is a valet, it's always a good oh. idea to use it. Mm. You, well, you have to. I mean, they won't let you park in those spaces because the Los Angeles... Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up Los Angeles because uh, unlike New York, where the valet is, is a rarity, in Los Angeles, you go to the drugstore and there's, there's a valet there. And those restaurants and um, organizations, businesses, they pay the city for those parking spaces. They have a lease on those parking spaces after 6 o'clock or, or whatever it is. And then they hire a valet company, which they pay. And so everybody's getting a cut. And then on top of that, you're expected to, to tip the valet. I mean, I, I've been, you tell me, John, I've, I've had friends out there who tip on top of like a $15 park, a valet parking uh, bill, they, part, they, they tip another 5 to $15. Is this crazy? Or yeah. it, right? Well, but, but that's what you do. The, the, oftentimes, the valet company or whatever it is, you know, has a fee, $5, $10 for valet parking. But when they deliver your car after dinner, you've got to put something in the palm of the guy who just got out of the driver's seat. How much do you put? It, it depends. Uh, it depends on. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, like you said, out here, even the malls, the regular mall, has valet parking. Uh, so for that person, it might be a couple of dollars. But if you're in a nice restaurant, you're probably going to pay at least five dollars uh, as a tip. Uh, or if you go retrieve your car at a hotel, uh, you're going to pay at least five dollars uh, for a tip. Also, John, I think it depends, your tip depends on how nice your car is. 
That's because of the, you're worried about the size of everything on your body. You know those type of people. Right. I'm yeah. driving a, a Mercedes guy. guy. Oh, it's a kind of a cheap skate if I feel too well. But you know better than I out there. Uh, here, it's not a bad. Again, if you pull up in a limousine uh, or, or or a Bentley or something in front of the St. Regis Hotel, of course you're going to tip five dollars, but you're going to tip everybody five, ten, fifteen dollars. There was right. a it was a Las Vegas commercial st that Steve Wynn was in years and years ago. And he comes in, and Frank Sinatra's in the commercial. And Wynn comes in and says, uh, he says, everything, anything, anything you want, Mr. Sinatra. And Sinatra whips out a $20 bill. He says, make sure I get fresh towels. You know, that was a, that was a joke. And, and Wynn, who was the president of the hotel, yeah. says, fresh towels? Ha, ha, ha. Well, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's what Frank Sinatra would tip. John Gotti, uh, the uh, plumbing executive who went to jail for other reasons, um, our, our favorite mafioso, uh, used to tip 100% of the bill at restaurants. Wow. Uh, and the waiters used to fawn over him as a result, of course. They never got it again because he'd always go to a different restaurant all the time because he didn't want to be in the known to go every Thursday to Pasquale's because uh, there might be somebody there to plug yeah. him. Called, it's called uh, not making yourself a target. Exactly. Well, so, this is uh, this is pretty fascinating stuff. Um, I never thought about it uh, really as a um, as an American issue. Um, I can understand that you know coming from a foreign country, it um, it would be important, but it's also true uh, of anybody traveling, you know, who's not used to the big city. The, I, you know, the big cities are quite different, which is why when we vacation, we don't go to big cities. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of us do. Another couple of things, for instance, um, the doggy bag. The doggy bag used to be held in contempt by Europeans, as typically American, but their portions are much smaller. Okay? You go to a nice Italian truck today, you're going to get three ounces of pasta, you're not going to get eight ounces of pasta, okay? And... Only because the French government decided, you know, the French waste a lot of food by refusing to take it home. Now, in France, you have to, if there's food left on your plate, you have to take it home a doggy bag. Really? But, yes. But what I'm saying is to all foreigners or anybody, don't feel like you're a commoner if you go to a steakhouse and you only ate half your steak. Ask for a doggy bag. There's no sin in that. And that's why they have them back there. Sure. Nobody's going to put down their noses uh, at them, you know. Yeah. So that, that's another thing. Um, lining up. Uh, and some Europeans, especially Russians, push, push, a push if they're in line, okay? The Italians, they don't form a line. They form a mass aggregate of people to get in the door of someplace. Don't <laughs> do that in the United States. The, the Asians don't do that, and uh, they know. Um, and w one last thing. Uh, asking for help. There is a predilection on the on behalf of a lot of tourists who think that in big cities especially new york or if we go abroad that people are going to be rude to you um i find this uh absolutely nonsensical um new yorkers are very willing to help perhaps not as much as if you are in paducah kentucky or atlanta georgia where they will uh try very hard to take you to the end of the block and show you. Although I find, I, I always find in, in the South, if I ask, so, so how, I'm going to this restaurant, how far away is it? Oh, it's a ways. What's a ways? Oh, I'm not real good on directions, but no, okay, that's why I have a GPS. But no, New Yorkers are very good about it. The trouble with New Yorkers is, is that so few of them <laughs> on the street are actually New Yorkers. They're either other tourists or people who speak <clears throat> very, very poor English or don't work in the area. So let's say you're walking down Park Avenue and uh, you want to say, how do I get to Broadway? Um, you may be, you know, greeted with, uh, I don't really know, even if it's just three blocks away. Um, but that's not the New York style. A New Yorker will very happily stop and give you directions um, and uh, don't be afraid to ask. But again, doormen are your friends. And we got doormen up the wazoo. Uh, over here. So just go to the nearest uh, apartment building or hotel and say, excuse me, how do I get to Broadway? I'm looking for this address and you'll be steered in the right direction. But we are not rude. We are very, very generous uh, hospitality wise. And that is true 
also we like to think of the French as being very rude over there. No, but the French, the French express, ex, expect a certain civilized behavior. You don't say, hey, you, hey, excuse me over there, hey, you, you don't do that in France. Um, you don't say, you know, things like, oh, down the hatch. Um, they expect a bit more civilized behavior. So sometimes they may look down your nose if you come into a restaurant shabbily dressed and uh, demand a table and, and demand a, a, that, that sort of thing. So, you know, you got to watch it. But, you know, Americans are very, very hospitable and foreigners should, should wallow in that. Well, you know, you bring up a subject for another video, and that is dressing for dinner. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, all the rules are off at this point, and I'm, I'm not kidding when I say that 100% minus one-tenth of 1% 1 of the restaurants in the entire world even ask a man to wear a jacket, mm -hmm. even ask. Jackets preferred, jackets suggested, we would appreciate it, but they are not uh, required. But I still uh, think they, they, they do have strict rules. If you're wearing pajamas, you must be wearing slippers. I well, uh, that's, that's yeah. pretty standard. <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't like pajamas unless you're Hugh Hefner. Uh, what, what is that name? Caitlyn Jenner, the person who was some kind of LGBTQ yeah. former Olympic athlete, now whatever he or she is. Um, went into the Polo Lounge in Los Angeles there on Beverly Hills and was wearing garishly ripped jeans. And they wouldn't let her in. And they said, well, we, have, we do have a dress guideline about flip-flops and, and so forth. She threw a fit, cursed at them in the foulest language, and then posted it on her Instagram account. Well, you know, you don't do that. You just mm -hmm. act like a civilized human beings you know where you're going you're going to the polo lounge in beverly hills honey you, you know you're not going to the taco bell or, or tail of the pup well, well a lot of those people uh, uh don't post on instagram they're uh, concerned about being turned away for ripped jeans because i guess ripped jeans is actually the the dress uh mode that's preferred there but i guess the important thing john is that uh, uh, as you so right, rightly bring up is if you're going to a place that you're not familiar with, you might want to get a little bit of the lay of the land uh, uh, to learn how to say, let's say, in, if you go overseas to say thank you and please in a foreign language, even if you don't know much of the personal language, but also uh, tipping, people will look at you uh, and feel offended. And if you're going to be someplace for some period of time, you should know <coughs> excuse me, some of the basic rules so that you get good service on an ongoing basis. And that you fit in. Just being polite. Yeah. It always works. John, great, uh, great advice, travel tips. Thank you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.